Welcome to the Meet the News. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. The 2015 presidential inauguration planning committee has mapped out the one week long activity to usher in the new administration on May 29. The 27 member committee is co chaired by the secretary to the government of the federation, Ayim Pais Ayim, and former Biosa state governor, Tim Sevia, representing the All Progressives Congress. After both sides met at the presidential villa for the second time, they have come up now with a list of activities that will culminate in the inauguration of President elect Mohamedou Buhari. Basi Aye now reports. It's slightly over a month to the May 29 handover date, and already there is a flurry of activities. The Joint Inauguration Planning Committee, comprising members of the outgoing and incoming administrations, have been meeting on the task ahead. They have held a second meeting and feel it's time to outline plans for the inauguration of President elect Muhammadu Buhari. But first, they had to introduce members from both sides of the divide. At this juncture, it might be necessary to present to you the composition of the inauguration committee. The members from the present administration are the Secretary to Government of the Federation, co-chairman, the Minister of Defense, and members are the Honorable Minister of Defense, the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, the Honorable Minister of Aviation, the Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory, and the members from the incoming administrations will be presented by my co-chair. The members from the incoming administrations are Chief Timmy Prey Silva, co-chair, Honorable Samson Osage, member, Chief Pius Akie Lure, member, Mrs. Abike Dabri Erewa, member, Ms. Sharon Ikeazo, member, Professor Tony Anwuka, member, Alhaji Kawu Baraje, member, Brigadier General John Shagaya, member. Then the committee ruled out a week-long program of activities, which is part of its mandate. Swearing in ceremony, lunch immediately after the swearing in, and a gala night. We have accordingly created subcommittees to focus on each activity. The co-chairman and members of the subcommittees may now or later take their turns to brief the public on their activities. With both parties working in harmony, Nigerians can only hope that the handing over process will be seamless. Basia Ye, Core TV News, Abuja. While many Nigerians still wonder why President Goodluck Jonathan initially planned to hand over power to the president-elect on May 28 as against May 29, our correspondent uh, Oluwashei Adegoke uh, went out to find out reactions and interacted with activists and lawyers on this issue. By the 28th of this month, the president intends to have the formal handing over done at a dinner so that you know we, we can reserve the 29th for the incoming. This statement by the Information Minister Patricia Akwashiki started generating reactions as soon as it was made. Many had wondered why the event will be at a dinner on May 28 against the normal practice of a public event on the 29th of the same month. And his reaction to the issue this activist, Debo Adenio, feels the issue should not be blown out of proportion. It's only the swearing in ceremony, and the outgoing president doesn't really have any role to play than to show the symbolism that uh, there was peaceful transition you know, from one regime to the other. But according to this Lagos based legal practitioner, handing over on the 28th will be disrespectful to the nation's norms. He called for due process to be adhered to. On the 29th of May, the president of the country must be in that program, you know, to hand over properly to a president-elect who becomes the president. Uh, so he cannot in any way run away on the 28th of uh, uh, May. Uh, that would be disrespectful even to his office. But just as this seems to be fast becoming a major source of friction between the incoming administration and the federal government, the government made a vault face that the information minister, Patricia Akwashiki, described as clarification of the 15th April briefing 
after the Federal Executive Council meeting. We want to clarify that 28 of May is not the date for handover. Handover and inauguration takes, uh, takes, uh, will take place on the 29th of May. Just as this may look lame to rest of an unnecessary distraction, the days ahead shows the point of what Nigerians will get from the political class. Uluwashi Yadigoke, Court TV News, Lagos. The House of Representatives has passed the 2015 budget of 4.493 trillion naira into law. The figure approved is, however, 135.4 billion naira higher than the 4.3 trillion naira proposal presented to the National Assembly. The report of the budget presented by the Chairman, House Committee on Appropriations, uh, John Eno, showed that the lawmakers appropriated 2.607 trillion naira for recurrent expenditure. Acting Inspector General of Police Solomon Arasag on Thursday met behind closed doors with President Goodluck Jonathan. It was the first time the new police helmsman would be holding talks with President Goodluck Jonathan since he formally took charge of the police force. Speaking with State House correspondent after the meeting, Arasa knew, uh, explained that he was at the State House to brief President Jonathan on police readiness for supplementary elections in Abia, Tarada, and Imo states. We still have an, some elections left in some uh, states, about three states, and uh, we are doing some massive deployments of man material, and that is what I came to, you know, brief the CNC on. And uh, I can assure you that we are going to, you know, uh, have a level playing field for people who want to, you know, vote on the election day. For the deviance, I said yesterday, will be decisively dealt with. But while the All Progressives Congress has urged the new acting Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase, to approach his new task with a high level of professionalism while shunning cross partisanship, which he says has dragged key national institutions of state, especially the police, into the political fray. This was contained in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Lai Mohammed. APC advised the acting IGP to learn from the fate that befell its predecessors who, under their watch, turned the police into the enforcement arm of the ruling party. He also says it's important for the police not to thwart the will of the people and act in negative ways. Meanwhile, the removal of Suleiman Abbas as, as Inspector General of Police by President Goodluck Jonathan on Tuesday and his replacement with Solomon Arasi with immediate effect as read out by media aide to the President, Ruben Abati, has been generating reactions. Patience Ajiboye has some in this report. With barely a month to his handover, President Goodluck Jonathan has dismissed the Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Abba, and immediately announced a replacement, Solomon Arasi, in acting capacity. Although in his statement, he did not give reasons for the abrupt dismissal and the immediate replacement of the police boss. Public affairs analyst Balaza says the action is somewhat worrisome as the timing is wrong and does not paint a good picture of President Goodluck Jonathan. If it continues like that, younger people or technocrats will not be encouraged to come and serve their government. 
in Lagos PDP member Akinto Yebranko Road's view, the president's action was in a way aggressive and abrasive, cutting short the career of the sacked Inspector General of Police in an abrupt manner. It is still unfortunate for him to have built a career and at the end when he's meant to be basking in the glory of that office or, or that career gets terminated. I think uh, it's unfortunate. Rhodes also says however unfortunate it is for ABBA, it will serve as a deterrent to other players to be loyal to constituted authorities. To help as a lesson to other people who hold sensitive responsibilities and duties to to be cautious in their performances. While reactions will continue in the days ahead, Nigerians patiently and hopefully await the outgoing president's rationale for firing an IGP who has over two years to spend in service, just about a month to his own departure as president. Patience Ajiboye, Core TV News, Lagos. The police have withdrawn the accreditation of a reporter from the Vanguard newspaper. They are also demanding a retraction of a story which the claim presented a false impression of what happened at the handover ceremony for former Inspector General Sulaiman Abba. The newspaper had reported that the former IG moved out the personal belongings from the force headquarters at about half past 11 in the morning. It also claimed that some Deputy Inspector General of Police protested against the appointment of the new police chief, Solomon Arese. But police spokesman uh, Imano Lojoko maintained that the entire report was false and malicious. He subsequently requested that the newspaper replace its correspondent because his accreditation had been withdrawn. We'll take a first break here. Back with more stories. Then go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. You can also get all of the top stories on any of our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash core TV names. Our Twitter Andu is at Core TV News NG. We stream live on YouTube as well for all of our news and programs. It's youtube.com forward slash Core TV. Give us space and news. Moving on now, the Director of Defense Information, Major General Chris Olukolade, says a notorious top commander of the Boko Haram group, Abu Mujahid, was among the terrorists killed in an encounter with Nigerian troops at the outskirts of Alagano. Ulukolade claims the terrorists had staged a daring attack on troops who were in patrol of the area, and a number of terrorists died as the troops repelled the attack. He also stated that the military operations are continuing in the form of offensive action on identified terrorists in some forest locations. Ulukolade further disclosed that the Boko Haram terrorists have run out of arms and ammunition. The Nigerian troops, earlier backed by warplanes, had invaded Boko Haram's last known stronghold, the Sambisa Forest, in an effort to finally rout out the insurgents. A federal high court in Abuja has admitted in evidence some exhibits the prosecution claimed was used by the alleged mastermind of the 2010 Independence Day bombing, Charles Orca. The evidence include a saloon car, bulletproof vest said to have been sent by Orca to one of the suspects Trial Judge Justice Gabriel Kolawale admitted the exhibits tendered by the prosecutor after counsels to the accused made no objection. He subsequently adjourned to May 27 for defense counsels to cross-examine the prosecution witness. President Goodluck Jonathan has ordered the removal of his campaign billboards, posters and banners across the country ahead of the May 29 inauguration of the incoming administration. This, he says, is because the 2015 presidential elections has since been concluded and a new president is set to be inaugurated. Presidential spokesman Ruben Abati said in a statement that the president has directed that the PDP presidential campaign organization and the Jonathan Sambo support groups to immediately begin the process of removing the campaign materials which still adorn the landscape in major cities across the country. 
He added that now that elections are over except for reruns in some parts of the state, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan wants Nigerians to put recent political campaigns behind them and join hands with the incoming administration. Well, be only a month uh, after its defeat by the APC, the People's Democratic Party on Wednesday vowed to regain power in 2019. To achieve this, members of the National Working Committee and state chairman of the party have resolved to work together. The APC won the March 28 and April 11 elections by producing Nigeria's next president in the person of Muhammad Buhari and a majority of the state governors, as well as most of the seats in the National Assembly. Rising from a meeting in Abuja, the National Working Committee members led by the National Chairman of the party, Adamo Muazu, and the State Chairman agreed to adopt strategies towards winning the elections in 2019. The meeting therefore directed all its candidates who believed that they were shortchanged to channel their grievances through their State Chairman. The meeting resolved to set up special committees on the repositioning of the party. Legal practitioners with expertise in electoral law have charged all aggrieved parties from the just-concluded election to patronize the path of law as the judiciary is more than prepared to take all the election petitions and do justice. As the practitioners prepare for a tribunal process in their various courtrooms, they say it is imperative for Nigerians to have faith in the system while rating the Nigeria judicial system as one of the best in the world. Amatayo Law has details. While the winners of the 2015 elections continue to solve their victory and those who still have supplementary elections to face wait, for the losers, the game is still not over, especially those who are dissatisfied with the outcome. Against the predictions of the Independent Electoral Commission to achieve a faultless process, the failure of the court readers, which gave rise to the use of incident firms, have been for these legal practitioners the major subject of petitions by parties and candidates who have questioned the credibility of accreditation and voting exercise where the card readers failed. It does seem as if uh, there's going to be a plethora of election litigations in all the tribunals all over the country. That's the picture we are getting at the moment. Virtually in all the chambers now, Lawyers are very busy. Busy time for lawyers. They are preparing election petition uh, and they are filing. And we had a lot of complaints on the card reader. So with this now, it boils out to the fact that uh, there could be some manipulation, there could be some human errors, and so on and so forth. And for that reason, all these have to be tested in court. For these legal practitioners, it would be societal for one to lose faith in the judicial system as it is in the best position to legally retrieve a stolen mandate. We should all have to exercise some patience because very soon all will be well. The court remains the, the bastion, the, the last hope for the, not only for the masses, even for the big men in this country. Though the date for swearing in of the newly elected leaders is fast approaching, the complainants who have made their petitions to the election tribunal say they would not lose hope until justice is done. Omotayualo, Court TV News, Ibadan. And now to Kaduna State, where Nigeria Labour Congress held a state delegates conference on Thursday with over 5,000 Labour activists in attendance. The event, which was held simultaneously across the country, is to pave way for the emergence of new leadership at the state level. It also provided an opportunity for the NLC to threaten action against states with outstanding wages and pension arrears. Amina Nebi was there. Our report is presented from our studios. The Gamji Gate venue of NLC's 11th State Delegates Conference was well decorated ahead of the event, but not many of the delegates showed up. This, however, didn't stop the labor movement from threatening action against state governments, which are owing workers and pension arrears. NLC President Ayuba Waba was represented by Maureen. Um, we are looking at a government that, that the change will touch all the economical sectors of our country. That's what we are looking at. We are looking at a government that will take on board the aspiration of Nigerian workers, pay them the, what, they, what is due for them, give them good salary, living wage. The delegates who expressed satisfaction over the turnout of events are hopeful of successful outing. The turn, the turn of the delegates is outstanding. I think we expect we expected to have this. That is to tell you that we have one indivisible Nigeria Labour Congress Kaduna State Council. So I'm happy workers are called and they turn up. We are very happy that uh, 
the NLC is conducting its 11th delegates conference uh, in consonance with the provision of their constitution. So uh, we, we are very happy, we enjoyed working with the last leadership. Well, I feel great that uh, today is the day that we are going to elect our new leader. The leader of NLC here in Kaduna State. Uh, this is the fourth uh, delegate conference that we are going to hold in Kaduna State. And we hope that those that are going to be elected today will lead us and guide us into the right path. Not many of the dignitaries expected at the opening of the conference turned up. But this did not dampen the enthusiasm of the labor activists. Delegates at the Kaduna NLC conference are only to choose a new auditor and ex-official member as all occupants of other positions were returned unopposed. has enjoyed residents to patronize licensed taxi and cab operators to guarantee their safety. Fashila gave this advice of the launch of new Lagos taxi system and distribution of licenses to the taxi operators. Abila Luwali was there. His report is presented from our studios. Being a cosmopolitan state, instituting a credible and effective means of transportation for commuters has continued to be a challenge, thus compelling successive administrations to evolve ways of solving the challenge. The new Lagos taxi license, according to the government, will make it possible for them to have a formidable database for taxi operators in the state. According to Governor Pashala, with 12,617 licensed taxi operators in Lagos, patronizing unregistered taxis is now illegal and such operators will be prosecuted if caught. For our citizens, therefore, our residents, there is no need, there is no compelling necessity for you to patronize an illegal taxi operator anymore. To do so, is to take your own security and personal safety for granted. He also stated that the initiative will further open up the tourism potentials of Lagos. The taxi drivers also commended the state government initiative. I can't, I don't want to overflog the benefits of this scheme. So I want to go as a businessman, go to the threats, possible threats that will be coming. Presently, sir, if you don't have that bill in the house out as a law back in this whole process, companies like Uber will run us out of business. The licensing scheme, according to government, will also set taxi operators to compete with others in the transportation industry since the license is given to them free of charge. Outside Nigeria now, European Union leaders gathering for an extraordinary summit are facing calls from all sides to take emergency action to save lives in the Mediterranean where hundreds of migrants are missing and feared drowned in recent days. The leaders will examine a plan to respond to the crisis after more than 10,000 migrants were plucked from seas between Italy and Libya in a week and are widely expected to approve swift action. EU President Donald Tusk urged the leaders from the 28 nations to agree on very practical measures, including strengthening search and rescue possibilities by fighting the smugglers and by discouraging their victims from putting their lives at risk while reinforcing solidarity. EU officials say the leaders will commit to doubling the size of the European border agency effort in the Mediterranean. But those operations are designed for monitoring migrant movements, not necessarily saving lives. Amnesty International and Doctors Without Borders want also a multinational rescue effort launched to help the thousands fleeing conflict and poverty from places like Syria, Eritrea, and Somalia. According to the UN's refugee agency, two million uh, 19,000 refugees and migrants crossed the Mediterranean last year, and at least 3,500 died trying. Perhaps 1,000 have already died this month alone. And that wraps it. They say on Court TV News. Do join us again at the top of the hour for more stories. I am Nithemi Oguntoye. Thanks for being there.